The Survivor Series. Who will survive? Well, sometimes the best way to survive is to dominate. And not surprising, but there are some teams that have definitely dominated more than others when it comes to WWE's annual November contest. Now, who are these teams that managed to survive by being the fittest? Well, they're the topic of this episode, because today... A big thank you to all of my wonderful Patreon supporters such as Anigo Montoya, Dakari Garment, and Rodney Harris. Thank all of you for the support as it really does mean a lot. Figuring out the top 10 most dominant teams in all of Survivor Series history is relatively easy to do because, well, for starters, spoiler warning, nine teams as of this recording have won the Survivor Series by clean sweep, meaning we just have to calculate the number 10th spot. Now, naturally, since all the other teams on this list won without a single elimination, that means whoever takes 10th place had just won. But out of all the teams to do that, well, which one are we going to choose? Well, in the event of a tie, I decide to go by time, as whichever team managed to win the quickest is clearly the most dominant. Oh, and also, the amount of members on their team does come into play, because if they are at a disadvantage, I think that should count for extra points. But what am I talking about? Well, let's just get into the list. But before we do that, please, please subscribe to this channel and give this video a big like, as it really does help a lot, and I do appreciate it. Anyway, let's get on with it. Nineteen ninety was an interesting year for Survivor Series, as this was the only time that the pay-per-view ever featured the grand finale match of Survival. This featured all of the previous survivors from all of the other team bouts throughout the night, all compiled together in one of two teams: Babyfaces versus Heels. Now, the Babyface team consisted of three wrestlers: Hulk Hogan, the Ultimate Warrior, and Tito Santana, and they went against the heel team of Ted DiBiase, Power and Glory, Paul Roma and Hercules, the Warlord, and the model Rick Martel. But enough about them for now, because we will be getting back to this team in just a little bit. But even though the odds were definitely stacked against the faces, the good guys still managed to come out on top, with only Tito Santana being eliminated. Furthermore, not only did Hogan and the Warrior come out victorious, but they also managed to do so in only 9 minutes and 7 seconds. Alright, as mentioned earlier, from this point on, every single team that's mentioned in this list has managed to win without a single elimination, and the number 9 spot goes to a surprisingly recent team. Last year, Braun Strowman, AJ Styles, Keith Lee, Matt Riddle, and Sheamus managed to defeat the team of Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, King Corbin, Seth Rollins, and Otis in 19 minutes and 25 seconds, clean sweeping the competition and giving the red brand the W. You know, it is funny that with all this brand warfare stuff, whichever show is viewed as the B show tends to win at Survivor Series, and as soon as Fox paid a billion dollars for SmackDown, magically, Raw started winning more often. Going back to that 1990 Survivor Series pay-per-view that we were just talking about that featured the grand finale match, it's important to note that that heel team also had another team within it, as Rick Martel, the Warlord, and the team of Power and Glory, Hercules and Paul Roma, wrestled previously in the night as a team called the Visionaries. And even though all of them would face elimination in the main event, they still did get a clean sweep earlier on. And with the team of Power and Glory inside of the team of the Visionaries that was inside of the heel team for the grand finale match, well, well, that means that was a team within a team within a team. Whoa, Inception. Now, if you've been thinking to yourself, so far all these teams have sounded amazing and I'm willing to bet the rest of them are going to be just as good, well, strap in because things are about to get a little surprising. As here we have the Royal Family, a team consisting of Captain Jerry the King Lawler and his teammates Cheesy, Queasy, and Sleazy, who defeated the team of Clowns Are Us, Captain by Doink the Clown and his teammates Dink the Clown, Pink the Clown, and Wink the Clown. You see that? Even though Jerry Lawler can't win a single title in the WWF, at least he managed to win this match. That's, you know, just as good, right?
1991, a team consisting of Sergeant Slaughter, Jim Duggan, the Texas Tornado, and Tito Santana completely dominated over the team of the Berserker, Hercules, Skinner, and Colonel Mustafa, who just several months prior was teaming with Sergeant Slaughter, who now decided that he wanted his country back. Now, as a kid, the time between Sergeant Slaughter being the top heel in the company to his eventual babyface turn seemed like a millennia, but now retrospectively, it's weird how slow time moved back then. Now, if you were thinking that only the men got to be this dominant Survivor Series, well, you would be wrong as the team of Alicia Fox, Emma, and Naomi, captained by Natalia, would defeat Paige, Cameron, Layla, and Summer Rae. And with Natty serving as team captain, of course she was going to lead her team to glory. In 1995, the team known as The Dark Side, which was captained by The Undertaker and also featured Savio Vega, Fatu, and Henry O. Godwin, took down, in a clean sweep, the team of The Royals, which featured King Mabel, Jerry Lawler, Isaac Yankum, and Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Which just goes to show you that Glenn Jacobs was feuding with the Phenom long before they ever became family. And in the third spot, we have the team of DX. This traditional five-on-five -five Survivor Series elimination match featured a team consisting of Shawn Michaels, Triple H, CM Punk, and Matt and Jeff Hardy, who defeated Rated RKO, which consisted of Edge, Randy Orton, Gregory Helms, Johnny Nitro, and Mike Knox. This clean sweep took 11 minutes and 30 seconds and happened back in 2006. Well, all I can say is at least CM Punk and the Hardy Boys were on this team. That makes it a little more manageable for me. In second place, we go back to 1993, where we have the team of The Doinks, which was a really weird group as it featured the Bushwhackers and men on a mission wearing Doink the Clown makeup. And even stranger still, they managed to defeat and completely thorough a team consisting of Bam Bam Bigelow, Bastion Booker, and the Head Shrinkers. And remember, it's the losing team in this match that would feature a future Intercontinental Champion with Rikishi and Bam Bam, who main evented a WrestleMania. But I guess Mabel is a former King of the Ring winner, so that is something. Although, if you're thinking that King Mabel did pretty well on this list, just hang tight until you hear the number one entry. And finally, we go to the most dominant team in Survivor Series history, which surprisingly doesn't really go to a team at all as The Big Show acted as an army of one, taking on the big boss man, Midian, Prince Albert, and Viscera. Now originally, The Big Show was supposed to team with Kai and Tai, Funaki, and Takamichinoku, as well as the Blue Meanie. However, before the event, The Big Show attacked all of his teammates and made it down to the ring by himself. But this didn't seem to hinder him at all, as in less than a minute, he took down Midian, Prince Albert, and Viscera. And upon seeing this, The Big Boss Man would hightail it and get counted out, giving The Big Show a clean sweep all by himself in only 1 minute and 26 seconds, easily giving him the top spot on this list. Well, there you go, the top 10 most dominant teams in all of Survivor Series history. Which one of these is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. And please, again, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and that you give this video a big like. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Dave knows.